Hello folks, today we are going to talk about polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. Hello, fo <clears throat> Hello folks, today we are going to talk about polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. Polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy has been first described in the 1990s. Patients typically present with a pigmented epithelium detachment, subretinal fluid, and hemorrhage on fundoscopy and geography, OCT, and fundus image. The main diagnostic criteria, the major criteria for PCV are the presence of the polyps, which are aneurysmal polypoidal dilations or terminal polyps. Second criteria is a peaked RPE. And the third criteria is a complex RPE elevation on OCT and geography. Other findings of PCV are hemorrhage or multiple serous subretinal fluid. The diagnosis of PCV or polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy is usually made with a series of tests being ICG and geography the gold standard. Other tests that allow determination of the disease are fluorescein and geography, fundus image, optical coherence tomography or OCT and geography. PCV may be an isolated condition in younger patients, very common in Asia, or may be part of the wet age-related macular degeneration. Recently, some investigators have proposed polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy to be part of the pachycoroid spectrum of diseases which include central serous choroid retinopathy. So bottom line is, you must be aware and pay attention to the presence of the polyps and the specific features of polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. You must recognize if it's an isolated condition or part of AMD. Treatment may be performed with the standard anti-VGF monthly injections. However, PDT may add benefit to some particular cases. I hope you like this brief introduction of PCV. See you on the next video.